You're watching Terrier Vision. Inside Wofford Football with Coach Mike Ayers and the voice of the Terriers, Mark Hauser. How do we match up with these guys physically? I don't know. I don't. I can't tell on film about a guy's heart. I can't tell on film about a guy's desire. I can't tell on film whether a guy is willing to grind every snap for the next 60 minutes. Because I don't know them, but I do know you. I've been through it with you. We've been through it together. And that's what it's going to take, going through this game together. Everybody hand in hand, everybody with one mindset, one heart, and one mental picture in your mind that, hey, I'm getting it done today. Today is the day to do it. There's no do-overs. We know that. There's no do-overs. If you don't get it done, you sack, you pack the gear. It's that simple. I don't know about you, but I don't want this to be over. I want to play this game like we're capable of playing this game. I want to be a team that is better than we've ever been today. Today. Because we have shown glimpses of greatness, but we haven't finished it. We haven't finished it. And today is the day to finish it. Dare to be great today. Dare to be great today. That's what it's all about. I'll see you out there. Welcome into Terrier Vision. I'm Mark Hauser. The Wofford Terriers earlier this evening in round two of the FCS playoffs. Winners over the New Hampshire Wildcats out of the CAA 23 to 7. The Terriers broke this thing early. Eric Breitenstein on Wofford's very first possession of the day on a fourth and one call popped a 54 yard touchdown run to begin a day in which the Walter Payton finalist ended up with 247 rushing yards and three touchdowns. The Terriers at the half led it 13 to nothing. Early in the second half, Wofford would cough up the football. New Hampshire's Cody Muller would run one in on a scoop and score on a fumble, and the Terrier lead was cut to 13-7. However, on their very next possession, Wofford would piece together a 90-yard touchdown drive with big runs by Breitenstein of 28 and 26 yards to go up 20 to 7. Wofford rode the play of their defense the entire day. In fact, the Terrier D did not give up a single point to a New Hampshire offense that came into the game averaging 36 points per contest and ninth in the nation in total offense averaging 471 yards per game. The Terriers held them to less than half of that. So now with a trip to the quarterfinals in store for the Terriers with a record of nine and three, we visit a happy Terrier locker room. Coach, congratulations. You had to work for it. Um, Halftime, you're up 13 to nothing, but it could have been more. So right. what did you tell the guys? Well, we, the big thing that we tried to stress was take care of the football and let's finish this thing. Uh, we had uh, a lot of great plays offensively. Uh, we had a lot of yards, but we didn't have production offensively. Uh, defensively, we again, uh, those guys played unbelievable. Uh, did a tremendous job on defense of taking the ball away. Uh, it, it was a who's who of every player, I think, had something uh, positive that, that they ended up doing uh, defensively. Uh, we had uh, guys that tackled extremely well. Uh, when they tried to run the football, uh, we knocked them back and uh, didn't allow them to get those extra yards. Uh, New Hampshire is, is an unbelievable team. Uh, they can throw the football as well as anybody. And uh, hats off to the secondary. Those guys played extremely well. And our underneath guys played extremely well. Our linebackers broke on the ball really well and, and came up with some big plays for us. Uh, kicking game-wise, uh, missed a couple kicks, but... Uh, Overall, it was a pretty good day. I, I thought Casey on that one punt down there, uh, Michael Harp, he kind of put him up down there on the, the one-yard line, and, and that was big at that point in the game. So uh, we uh, we got a few guys nicked up. I'm not sure we'll, we'll do the count tomorrow, uh, but uh, we're still in it. 
that there's eight teams left and, and we're one of them and uh, we're proud to be one of the eight. Uh, the next challenge uh, from the way things are going uh, looks like North Dakota State. I think they're the number one seed and uh, and to tell you the truth, I don't know anything about them. Uh, our focus has been solely on uh, New Hampshire and uh, trying to get this one done. But uh, I think uh, after the last year, uh, the Northern Iowa deal uh, left a bad taste in uh, a lot of our guys, and uh, they, they wanted to come out and they, they wanted to prove some things. And uh, and they came out and they, they played a whale of a football game. Uh, very thankful for the crowd. Everybody that, that came to the game, uh, they, they saw a pretty good game. And uh, just want to thank them for their support. And uh, who knows, maybe we can uh, – get another one back here. I don't know. I don't know how it all works out. <laughs> Eric ran for 247 yards, three touchdowns, but he didn't play in the fourth quarter. Right. Looked like he got nicked up. Was that precautionary or yeah. could he have gone back in if yeah. you needed? He could have gone back in, but uh, at that point in the game, I, I felt like that, you know, we, uh, Donovan Johnson, uh, Donovan's a quality player. Uh, back force and and he's both a full back and a half back uh if donovan would have got hurt caleb lucas would have gone in he would have done fine as well uh eric got a tweak in the hamstring uh, and uh just didn't want to take a chance he said coach i can go back in and uh i i disagreed with him and so you know we we tried to you know just keep him on the boundary uh we had uh, several guys that got nicked up um and uh, one of them, Alvin Cena, uh, slight pull in his hamstring, but uh, hopefully he'll be well. Uh, we'll try to come up with the best guys that we can, uh, the healthiest football team we can, and uh, take a trip to uh, the Dakotas, North Dakota. So <laughs> I, I haven't been up there, uh, but uh, I don't know, looking forward to it. Eric, first of all, Northern Iowa finished poorly last year. This year you get that first victory in the playoffs. Give us an idea of what that feels like, kind of getting over, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's an important step to take. you, you got to win this one, win the next one, and the next one if you want to get to the national championship. So this is just the first step. And, uh, you know, we're, it seems like we're going to have a pretty tough opponent next week as well uh, in uh, North Dakota State. First drive of the game, you're in danger of going three and out. You go for it on fourth down, and you pop one. Talk about that play, that uh, 54-yard touchdown run. Yeah, things like that are going to happen. When you, uh, when you pack everybody up in the box and, uh, and our offensive line is able to handle it and our backs are able to handle the blocks, um, you're going to get a seam a crease and be able to take it onto the end zone. But, uh, you know, it was just one of those things where it popped and I was able to jog it on in. But uh, I thought they did a good job defensively stopping us at times, but mostly it was just us shooting ourselves in the foot. We can't do that, and I've said that week in and week out, I feel like, but we keep doing it. Um, thankfully, our defense is really good, and they've been able to hold people down. You get up 13 to nothing. They get a scoop and score early in the third quarter. So now it's 13 to 7. Talk about the offense's mindset going into that next drive, especially since you start way back inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, we knew it was one of those things where if we're going to we're going to start, we need to start right now and uh, got to get the momentum back on our side because our defense had played great all game. And uh, for us to give up the only points is really, uh, really kind of hurts. So uh, we knew we needed to step it up and get a drive going. You didn't play the fourth quarter. What was it like to watch a guy like you, a fifth-year senior, Brad Nosek, come up with some huge plays? Uh, Brad's my roommate, and I love the kid to death. He's, uh, he always plays he's such a solid back. Um, he does a job every time. You can always count on him to get to the right pad or make a huge block or pick up a fourth down like that. And when, when we pitched it to him, I was confident, even though there were people all around him, he was going to pick it up. I mean, he always falls forward. No one person's ever going to bring him down, and uh, he just runs hard every, every time he gets the ball. You ever been to Fargo? No, <laughs> but looks like I'm going. So uh, it'll, be, it'll be exciting. I mean, I know they're a good football team. We'll get in here and study some film and uh, figure it all out. But uh, I'm, I'm excited. You ever intercept a ball off a guy's helmet before? No, I never did that before. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I seen it come down, caught it, try to make a move, get some yards. I got a few, but uh, that, that, that was the first for me. What, what made it so that you're – linebacking core and the defensive front was able to pressure the quarterback so effectively today? Uh, we're just working our hands, uh, getting off blocks, uh, different uh, defensive things like that, strategies, uh, 
working different stunts up front. I mean, just, just giving the offense a hard time, giving them different looks so uh, they don't get accustomed to one look and uh, different things of that. So it, being aggressive and uh, efficient, things like that, playing and play great defense today. What was it like playing against a team that doesn't want to huddle up, wants to get right back up to the line of scrimmage uh, time and time again? Yeah, it was a little different for us. I mean, we, we practiced for it all week, so the coach did a great job at getting us ready for that. Uh, ran throughout practice and uh, definitely got our endurance right. So, I mean, we were, we were ready for it. It come the game time and, uh, you know, it showed out there. You ever been to the Dakotas? Never been to the Dakotas. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Mike, last year at Northern Iowa, you came up short, and I know that's kind of been kind of a focus, like, let's get it done this time. So what was it like to wash that out and, and win one of these? Yeah, I mean, it's always great to win in the playoffs. Uh, it's the biggest stage, and, you know, it's it's for the big, the big championship. So, uh, you know, any win in the playoffs is a great win, and uh, we're just looking forward to next week now. Only points allowed today came on a scoop and score for their defense. Give us an idea of what made your defense so effective to hold them to zero points. Uh, we just played uh, assignment sound, and you know when they would get a couple yards here or there, we wouldn't dwell, dwell on that. We would get on to the next play, and we'd think about stopping them again. And then obviously the takeaways were huge, and uh, just not giving up any big plays. Looking ahead now, a quarterfinal matchup. Um, what does it mean to you? What does it mean to this team to have a chance to advance and, and play on an even bigger stage next week? Uh, it means everything. You know, uh, we accomplished our first goal of winning the SOCON, and uh, now our next goal is to win the national championship. So we're just trying to accomplish that goal. So we just got to win. So with the victory this afternoon over New Hampshire, Wofford advances to the FCS quarterfinal round where they will play the number one overall seed in the nation, the North Dakota State University Bison, who earlier today beat South Dakota State as they advanced. Fargo, North Dakota is the home of the Bison. They play in an arena called the Fargo Dome, which builds itself as the loudest arena in all of college football. It is an indoor stadium in a very cold place in December. The Terriers will play up there either Friday or Saturday night with a chance to advance to the FCS's Final Four. Thanks for watching Terrier Vision. I'm Mark Hauser.